So today I'm gonna talk about why I wanna tear down the system. This is a word. So, hey, all of you, uh, this is a continuation in the ongoing debate between me and YouTuber Swayze Foster of Unnatural Vegan. I want to thank Lullaby Neanderthal, who um, finally clarified that for me. So now, all of you who've been saying it's Swayze, and some of you have been saying it's Swayze, now it is, it is Swayze. And I got that from a little video clip, and I'll include a link to that video clip in the description box below. This is going to, again, be continuing with a debate, but I'm hoping that what I'm going to share with you today stands alone in each of these videos in the series. I've been trying to address just a general area, not really directing any criticism specifically at Swayze, although sometimes it is specifically, you know, criticism or rebuttal of something that Swayze has said. But the ideas, I think, are larger than anything that are included in this debate. Now, I know that there are some people who have concerns about a recent, um, I, I did a guest appearance on Vegan Cheetah's uh, You Now, and I was talking specifically about the Anna Scanlon lawsuit and, you know, my concerns about a lawsuit in general. You guys know that I, you know, I generally don't kind of mess with the state. Um, I like to avoid engagement with the state unless it's, you know, something that's absolutely necessary, like, you know, a crime is happening and someone's life is in danger. But aside from that, you know, I like to avoid like too much engagement with the state. And that has to do with my own issues. Again, it's not a criticism at all of Anna Scanlon or anyone else who has confidence in the state. If you guys don't know, there are about a million DTE customers who have lost power. So we're basically in a blackout here in, a, in parts of Michigan. So um, things are a little out of whack for me. So I'm recording this on my iPhone that has to do with being able to kind of charge my battery and some other things with just my whole setup here. So um, I hope you'll forgive me. Also, I'm gonna read this response because I want it to just be very concise about, because I'm talking about you know the dismantling of the system and it can get a little, it's, a, it's something that can be um, very scary for people. So I want it to be as, um, I just want to be as careful with my selection of words as possible so that, you know, mistakes aren't made and people don't have to worry about if things are what I meant to say or if I was just, you know, screwing things up, all right? Um, and also, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much it. Also, you know, I guess people feel like, you know, maybe I'm being hard on Swayze. My, you know, this isn't really, ultimately this is not about Swayze. Swayze has been an opportunity to bring a lot of people to the channel. But the fact of the matter is, these are things that I would want to say to all of you, even if, even if Swayze weren't engaged in it. So I hope you guys don't feel like that's cheating. But um, yeah, so this is me taking advantage of an opportunity where I have some attention from some folks, specifically around the issue of social justice, and I'm going to say some things about that while I have your attention. All right, this is a response specifically to some concerns, and I think that they're valid concerns that anyone would have when um, thinking about a group of people who are interested in dismantling um, a system, especially if it's the system that affects all of our lives, especially if they feel like that is happening outside of a context of thought around how to replace that system. And so this, uh, th this video today is going to address both of those things. And again, I'm going to read it and I hope you guys don't mind because you're not going to see my eyes as much as you do and you're probably not going to see as much kind of attitude as you like to see from me. Anyway, all that going, I'm going to jump right in. Okay, so first of all, um, there was a question of whether or not social justice or intersectionality were my belief system. And again, I'm insisting that uh, social justice itself is not a belief system for me, nor is intersectionality, but those two, there is, there is an underlying belief system um, that is causing me to embrace those things, and I'll explain those here. Okay, so it's not that none of my adherence to social justice has anything to do with what I believe. Um, so the first belief is that society is sufficiently lacking in justice. It's not for me about the treatment of blacks, women, animals, or the environment. Although I understand that the treatment and the exploitation of certain groups over time has made possible the present that we live in. That is a belief. It's a belief in how the wealth and the control of the world's resources by a minority was made possible. And that's regardless of the understood motives of this minority. I don't believe that this is good for the majority of people on the planet, 
and our present circumstances bear out that belief. I also believe that our current systems that we call democratic and that I believe most people embrace because they have been told they are democratic are vulnerable to corruption and interference by those who control the majority of wealth and resources. I believe that a litany of our current problems major problems stem from that vulnerability. I believe that even as a consequentialist, one might accept that the disappointment of this minority by curbing their influence and decentralizing control of vital resources is the moral choice. This is a belief. It's one I feel can and should be challenged to ensure that it's rooted in evidence and in fact. I also believe that many of our current institutions are failing, in part because they are susceptible to the corruption I spoke of previously, but also because they're archaic and were never designed to serve in the modern context we find ourselves in or heading towards. They need to be replaced not because they're evil, but because they don't work. I believe clinging to these institutions simply because one is unsure of what might replace them is about equivalent to staying inside of a burning house because one hasn't planned where they will live. A rational being, I believe, would risk potential homelessness to avoid being burned alive. A resourceful person might even have planned ahead. The house is burning. But instead of panicking, there are social innovators who are thinking about where we will go next and testing new social technologies. Some are more well-known and include the movement towards clean and renewable energy. I currently work with an organization called Solidarity that advocates for locally and democratically controlled clean and renewable energy. I did a mukbang from the Solidarity retreat last August. For years, I've been engaged in urban farming and community-supported agriculture, which I think many people are familiar with, which specifically presents a solution to food deserts and provides food sovereignty. There's the Alt Space Project, which is inspired by any number of community-based sustainable living projects. Another on a larger scale is the Avalon Village. My work in popular education, which is the focus of the conference for which I'm the lead organizer, is alternative and liberatory education that includes the free school movement and place-based learning. Detroit has the Peace Zones for Life movement to address violence in some of the city's most distressed areas. It also offers an alternative to calling the police every time there's a dispute and provides tools for peaceful conflict resolution. I've been a peacemaker through the Center for Court Innovation, which provides another alternative to criminal sanctioning. There's also democratizing the workplace using the cooperative model, which is just a small part of the solidarity economy movement, which includes time banking, mutual aid networks, community land trust, gifting, local production, new work, housing collections. These are social technologies I've been exposed to through participation in movements for social justice. And these are the activities that I devote my time and energy to. I'm presenting these things to you as evidence that I have thought very deeply about what we might be replacing our failing systems with. And contrary to beliefs that I and other social justice advocates are simply trying to dismantle a system that we don't like, I think there is far more energy and concern that goes into the fact that these systems are failing. And I think most people agree. I think certainly there are many ways that these issues can be addressed, and I'm certainly open to hearing about them. I do find myself lacking in patience or even respect for people who simply want to deny that there's a problem, and that's something that I need to work on. It doesn't mean that I'm not open to evidence to the contrary. I'm just not seeing very much of that. I don't know, what do you think? That's it for this video. Like it if you like it, share, comment, subscribe. This is Red signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto, big guns and dickies. I love myself.